you, Mr. Speaker. I do join the Prime Minister in thanking the former head of the civil service, Jeremy Hayward, for his public service. Wish him well on his recovery, and I have to say, in my conversations with him, what an impressive, well-informed, and dedicated public servant he is. And I really do hope he gets through this very difficult condition he's in at the present time. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister says austerity is over. The Conservative leader of Walsall Council says austerity is alive and kicking. Who's right? Minister. Can I say to the right honourable gentleman, indeed, after a decade of working pe a decade of austerity, people need to know that their hard work has paid off, and because of their sacrifices, there are better days ahead. So we will be setting out our approach. We will be setting out our approach in the spending review next year. What does it mean? I'll tell him what it means. It means debt uh, going down as a share of the economy and support for public services going up. Uh, but I have to say that, unlike Labour, we will continue to live within our means and we won't go back to square one. Well, Mr Speaker, this process hasn't been very convincing to Mike Bird, the Conservative leader of Walsall Council, who says, never ever believe what you hear from central government. Austerity <laughs> is not over. Her MPs seem to have lost a lot of confidence in her and to her councillors as well. And not far away in Derby, the Conservative Council says financial outlook is extremely challenging, with government austerity measures confirmed as continuing. Will the Prime Minister try and clear up these, cheer up these gloomy Tories in Derby and confirm to them that uh, next week the budget will cancel the £1.3 billion cut planned for local government next year? Prime Minister! I say to the right honourable gentleman, actually we're making £1.3 billion more money available in, the, in these next two years to councils. And I'm pleased to say, I'm pleased to say... I'm pleased to say the council tax is down in real terms since under the last Labour government. Yeah. But if he, if, he, if he wants to sort of make statements about what should be in the budget, perhaps we ought to look at his past predictions. Ah. He said that our plans would mean a million people losing their jobs. What have we seen? 3.3 million more people. He said, he said our plans would meet Greek levels of youth unemployment. And what have we seen? Youth unemployment is at a record low. Yeah. So, so he'll, he'll find out what's in the budget next week. But there's one thing that we know for certain. Labour will still make a mess of the economy. Yeah. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister didn't get round to mentioning the record numbers of people on zero-hours contracts. <laughs> The record levels The record levels of in work poverty, meaning people in work have to access a food bank and wages lower in real terms than they were eight years ago. And that her government has cut forty nine per cent from local governments since two thousand and ten. Staffordshire police have lost five hundred officers. On Sunday, the Chief Constable, Gareth Morgan, said sorry to his police colleagues and their families as they had to cancel rest days just to maintain the service. He apologised to his officers. Will the Prime Minister apologise to the police as well? Yes. Prime Minister! The, the right honourable gentleman, that he talks about the police and about what is available for the, the uh, police. Of course, what we saw at the last election was the Labour Party saying £300 million more pounds should be made available to the police. What we have done is made available £460 million more pounds to, uh, 460 more pounds to the police. Um, but can I, can I also say to the right honourable gentleman, if he wants to talk about figures, I actually have a book here that's edited by the Shadow Chancellor, and in an article by an, an economic adviser to the Labour Party, he says about their last manifesto, the numbers did not add up. <laughs> That this was a welcome, that this was a welcome feature, and largely irrelevant. 
where it may, it may be irrelevant to the right honourable gentleman and the shadow chancellor, but it's not irrelevant to the people whose taxes go up, whose jobs are lost, and whose children have to pay Labour's debt. Only one party costed their manifesto in the last election, and it wasn't the Tory party. And for all she says, Mr Speaker, for all she says about police, the reality is there are 21,000 less police officers than there were eight years ago. And she should listen to the Chief Constable of the West Midlands, who says criminals are taking advantage of these cuts. And I quote, we're struggling to deliver a service to the public. I think the criminals are well aware of how stretched we are. Two weeks ago, the Prime Minister told the House that people on universal credit will be protected. The very next day, the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions said some people will be worse off on universal credit. Yep. Which statement is true? Yep. Yep. Prime Minister! Can I remind the right honourable gentleman what I made clear to the House was that those people who are moved uh, through the managed migration process onto universal credit will indeed have the protections of, I think it's a, around £3 billion of transitional protection. But let me just tell him what happens under universal credit. 200,000. Oh, the shadow. The shadow foreign secretary says no, 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 because they don't want to know what happens in terms of universal credit. Two, 200,000 more people into work. 700,000 people getting the extra money they're entitled to and one million disabled households get more money per month. We're not replicating the old system because the old system didn't work. This is a system that helps people into work and make sure work pays. Mr Speaker, I think the Prime Minister is completely out of touch with the reality of what Universal Credit is about. £50 per week worse off. Weeks waiting for the first payment when they move on to universal credit. People going into debt. People losing their homes. People stressed out beyond belief because they can't make ends meet and having to access a food bank just to feed their children. That is the reality of universal credit. Mr Speaker, eight years of Tory austerity means there are 40,000 nurse vacancies in the NHS. The numbers of students applying for nurse training has fallen by over 16,000 since the cut in the nurse bursary. The Prime Minister told us austerity is over. Will the Government take the necessary step next week in the Budget of restoring the nurse bursary so those who want to become nurses in our NHS can realise their ambitions? Prime Minister! The Right Honourable Gentleman mentioned in Universal Credit the weight that people have in order to get their first payment. We announced in the Budget last year that we were reducing the period of time that people had to wait for their first payment. And what did the Right Honourable Gentleman and the Labour Party do? They voted against that change. And then he talks about if there's an end to austerity, actually we should be doing more for the National Health Service. Can I remind the Right Honourable Gentleman? It is this Government that has announced that we are going to be putting £394 million a week more into the National Health Service. At the last election, Labour said that with 2.2% more money into the NHS each year, it would be the envy of the world. Well, I can tell the House we're not putting 2.2% in. We're not putting 2.5% in. We're not putting 3% in. We're putting an extra 3.4% in with a long-term plan that will deliver for people up and down this country. Mr Speaker, applications for nurse training dropped by 12% in September. That's the reality of taking away the nurse bursary. Yeah. Those that want to become nurses cannot afford to go into debt in order to do a job they want to do, and we all need them to do. Yeah. Mr Speaker, this government is simply not being straight with the public. Yeah. They promised an end to austerity. They can't even fool their own councillors. 
they promised the NHS an extra 20 billion. We don't know where it's coming from or yeah. when it's coming. GP numbers falling, health visitor numbers falling, and nurse numbers falling also. They promised universal credit would protect everyone. Oh, the work and pension sector let the cat out of the bag. People will be worse off. The Prime Minister claimed she's ending austerity. So will she confirm that in next week's budget there will be more police on our streets, more nurses in our hospital, and elderly people in desperate need of care will not go ignored and forgotten by her government? Prime Minister! The uh, right honourable gentleman. What have we seen under this government? We've seen more money being available to the police, we've seen more money for the health service, more money for social care, more money going into local authorities, more money going into our schools. And at the end of this Parliament, at the end of this Parliament, we'll be spending five hundred million pounds more in real terms on people of working age and children in our welfare system. But let's actually look at what we now know about what the Labour Party's alternative is. Because we now see, we now see, as reported by a respected academic, that by their own admission, Labour's plans would cost £1,000 billion. Wow. Wow. That's the equivalent, the equivalent of £35,000 for every household in this country. We know what that would mean. Higher t debt, higher taxes, fewer jobs. Labour just taking us back to square one. Yeah.